Hi everyone, Mrs. Hilt here with today's lesson on motion graphs. So we are going to be bringing back the motion family from the last video uh, and putting them in the form of a graph. Uh, in the upper corner over here, I have a key with there to go with my highlightings. Uh, I'm going as I'm going through uh, the pages, I will be hiding highlighting things in this yellow. Uh, these will be the key points or information uh, that you guys need to know. Uh, the topics are already highlighted in light blue, and when we get to practice problems, those ones are highlighted in purple. All right, and I did post this document uh, to Google Classroom. It should be in the same location as where you found this Edpuzzle link if you wanted to look at uh, this at a later time. All right, so first thing is looking at distance graphs. Uh, so distance graphs are going to be displayed just like this one right here, where you have distance on your y-axis and time is on your x. And x-axis are, for all of these, going to always be time. So they are always your independent variable and your dependent is on the y-axis. So the first type of uh, distance time graph that we're going to look at is one when something is at rest. So if something is at rest, uh, it is not moving, therefore its distance is not changing. So it will have a horizontal line if it is at rest. Okay. Next for distance time is uh, showing a constant speed. Constant speed is just going to be a straight line, uh, look like a linear graph, just like that. Uh, it doesn't have to be exactly like that one. Uh, it could look like this next one down where it has the dotted line and then the straight line. Uh, these just indicate a higher speed for the dotted line and uh, a lower speed or slower speed for the not dotted line. And for times that uh, speed is changing, uh, you will have a graph that looks like this one, kind of an exponential. So your speed is increasing, and you actually will have then an acceleration. Here is the summary that goes with the distance time graphs. So a ste steeper graph faster the motion. Horizontal line means the object is not changing position, it is not moving, it is at rest. And a downward sloping line means that the object is returning to the start. And this graph right here I think is awesome because it has really all types of the distance time graphs that you guys will see. Uh, this document will definitely be good to look back on if you guys have ever have questions about these type of graphs. All right, here comes our first practice problem. Uh, so which of the following graphs uh, shows one of the runners starting 10 yards further ahead of the other runner? All right, so if you or either pause the video uh, or it'll be pausing very shortly and the questions will pop up soon. All right, question number two for distance first time graphs. Uh, in which of the following graphs are both runners moving at the same speed? Okay, and the last question for distance first time graphs. So we have four different graphs here. And I want you guys to match the description with uh, each of the graphs. So the questions will pop up first graph A 
and I want you guys to uh, type in which description you believe describes that graph and then explain why. So you will have four questions starting now. All right, next up is speed versus time graphs. So the first thing I need to point out are the axes because the last time was distance versus time. This is speed versus time. This graph, I already know, looks identical to the first one that I showed you. However, it is not because of the axis. All right, so speed has replaced distance. So this graph tells us a very different thing or can tell us a very different thing. So if we, uh, we have a speed versus time graph that is moving or that is horizontal, the object is not at a rest like it was with the distance versus time graph. Uh, it is actually moving at the same speed. Okay, so a constant speed. There we go. Now the two graphs below uh, show a straight line, one going up, one going down. Uh, the first one shows that an object uh, is moving and it is accelerating because over time the speed is changing or as time goes on the speed gradually, gradually gets greater. And it is the exact opposite for the second graph. As time goes on the speed gradually gets slower. Okay. And how we are finding acceleration from this is actually just based on the units that go with the axes. So speed we know is meters per second and time is seconds. Therefore, when you calculate the slope of the graph, it would be in meters per second per second, which we learned on Friday that meters per second squared is acceleration. And it is okay if it is negative, that just means it is deceleration. All right, now what the graphs look like if something is going accelerating uh, faster or slower will look like this graph up here. So we have a faster acceleration versus a slower acceleration. So a greater speed versus a or greater slope versus a lesser slope. Now we have another summary right here. And just like last time, a really good graph to show uh, how or to represent the changes in acceleration from a speed versus time graph. So all the different slopes that result from a speed versus time graph. Okay, now it is your turn to try out uh, some examples with speed versus time. Uh, so this looks similar to last time, uh, except again, you gotta pay close attention to those axes. These are all speed versus time. Uh, you guys will again have four questions that are coming up, starting with graph E. So choose one of the descriptions uh, shown right here. And uh, one for each of them, and then the explanation or the because is on you. All right, for this one, uh, you guys will have five different questions. Uh, the first three are going to be uh, all right. The next ones, uh, you guys will have five questions associated with this graph right here. Okay, so we have Albert, Bob, and Charlie, and the graphs that uh, go with each of those men while they are running. 
So I want you guys to identify who won the race, which runner stopped for a rest, how long, had, uh, how long was the stop, how long did pa Bob take to complete the race, and that answer you will explain, and then calculate uh, Albert's average, average speed. Okay. Uh, I'm going to add some color to go with this graph to make it a little easier for you guys to see who is who. All right, and this is your last set of questions. Uh, so for these ones, you will be <clears throat> asked multiple choice questions, and your answer choices are right here, either accelerating, decelerating, constant speed, or at a rest. Notice there are five different blanks that you would have to fill in, so you will definitely use one of at least one of these more than once. Uh, but refer to the graph for the next five questions.